All right, we're looking at the third question of the 2022 AP Physics 2 free response. Um, if I have any corrections, I'll put it in the pinned comment below. Hydrogen atom can be modeled as an electron in a circular orbit of radius r, but a stationary proton is shown above. The gravitational force between the proton and electron is negligible compared to the electrostatic force between them. So we don't need to worry about gravity, just the electrostatic force. Derive an equation for the speed of the electron in terms of r and physical constants. All right, so they're being attracted to each other of the electron. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the electron, and it just has the electrostatic force here. Okay. And it's moving in a circle here. So the electrostatic force is just equal to KQ1, Q2 over R squared. And that equals MA. Net force equals max times acceleration, just like you guys did in AP Physics 1. Net force equals MA, just kind of like that. Now, in this case, it's centripetal. So it's MV squared over R, right? Moving in a circular path. So what is the charges? So this is going to be K. Um, Q electron, or we'll just say Q um, electron um, squared, right? Because the proton and electron have the same charge, just, you know, they're, they're opposite charges, but like ultimately I specified the direction with this. So you don't need to make it negative or anything like that. Divided by R squared is equal to M mass of the electron, V squared over R. One of these R's is going to cancel. And then I can bring the ME over. So I have K Q E squared over M E times r is equal to v squared, and then I just take the square root. Okay, Derive an equation for the total energy of the atom in terms of r and physical constants as appropriate. Okay, so they're just modeling it as an orbiting proton here. So the total energy of the atom. Um, I just, I'm, I'm just curious what they want to talk about in terms of all the energies that I would want to include here. Total energy of the atom. Um, the question I ask myself is, would I do say, so we can talk about the kinetic energy of the electron. So what energies do I want to include? That's what I'm going to do. The energy is going to be the kinetic energy of the electron because it's moving. Um, do I want to add the rest mass of the atom. That's the question I'm trying to ask myself is, do I want to do E equals MC squared? I guess I might as well, because there is some matter in there and they didn't say so the rest mass of the energy um, is equal to, um, you know, the, the rest, the rest, rest mass energy. So that's the e equals MC squared. And then we would just talk about the electrostatic potential energy between there. So the potential energy, it's kind of like a planet, but the potential energy of that situation. And I don't know if they give you that formula. They give you that formula. Not used to doing that, but you would, you would, let me see, because of the charge, just like you would do gravitational potential energy, like this whole atom does have an internal energy here, right? That, that we would talk about. So we would do all of that. So I would say that's one half mass of the electron, the velocity of the electron squared plus E plus E equals MC squared. So that would be the mass of the proton plus the mass of the electron times C squared plus the potential energy. And um, uh, we would use negative K Q1 Q2 over R. It's similar to gravitational potential energy, but it's it's for that, and you, I, I didn't look at that. Let me see, you guys are given that equation? I don't think you're given that equation. So that's the only thing that's like kind of puzzling me a little bit is, I don't know. You could talk about it from a potential point of view. They give you those equations of the potential. I don't know, it, it is correct. It's just sort of a question of whether or not you, you would use this form. I am not as familiar Oh, yeah, I, th I think I'm going to go ahead and, and just, just put it in there. Now, is the potential energy, because they're drawn to each other, this potential energy is considered to be negative overall. Yeah. So this would be one half. Oh, actually, derive equation. Actually, actually, let me take a look. Total energy in terms of MR and physical constant. So it's mass of the electron. This squared would be KQE squared 
over mass of the electron times R. Those are all constants, plus MP plus MC, or mass of the electron times C squared. And then we would do minus K Q of the electron squared over R. And so these masses would cancel here. You don't have to simplify. I just want to, I, I, I like to simplify because I like to know if the answer sort of makes sense to me. So if you look at that, these two are kind of like the same thing, but I'm subtracting half. I, I'm just going to leave it like that, but like, or I'm subtracting one. So it'd be like minus one half of it or something like that. But you could have simplified that. You could have combined these two like terms. I'm just trying to decide if that makes sense. Mm. So the only tricky thing about this one is, um, um, is if this is negative, what that what that implies is that the potential energy is zero at infinite distance, and that's that's fine. That's 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 okay to use that as a reference. Um, but yeah, I don't know about that one. That's the only one I'm not sure about. Um, I feel like that is the reasonable thing. That's what I would do. But like I said, because they don't give you that formula, I feel like a little bit strange about it. But um, yeah, I, I think it's okay though. I mean. I don't want to do any calculus to show you anything. So I just kind of, that's why I'm a little concerned about this part. You do, like, if I put in the formulas, just as a discussion here, just so I see, like, you do have, like, this formula, right? This is usually talking about potential differences, but you could talk about the potential, the potential of a proton would be, like, this guy here. And so the change in the energy would be Q times this guy right here. All right, this is, this is, this is, um... This, this thing is the same as K. Um, so, yeah. Oh, you guys don't use K. Oh, I didn't realize you guys, uh, you guys use, uh, well, anyway, the formula sheets don't use, I'm used to using K, the Boltzmann constant, but the formula sheets don't have, but like, this guy's K, basically, right? That's KQ over R, and that's, that's basically what I'm doing for the voltage. You're just doing that times Q, which is negative, so then, like, this is positive. That's why this quantity becomes negative, ultimately. Okay, when the hydrogen atom absorbs a photon, the electron moves in an orbit with a larger radius and the total energy of the atom, uh, atom increases. Is the equation for your energy derived part be consistent with this description? So let's let's combine these two terms. Now, now I'm, this is mp plus mc, or mass of the electron c squared, and then this is minus one half kqe over r squared. Um, so when r increases, so to say, as r increases, then the negative one half K Q E over R squared becomes smaller in magnitude. Or we would say less negative, right? That means the total energy is larger. The total energy increases. So because of this negative sign, this is a negative sign, right? So when I make this thing smaller, it's less negative. It goes from like negative 10 to negative 5, right? And that's an increase. And so yes, so that is consistent. Okay. Experiments show that a hydrogen atom can absorb a photon of frequency. This, calculate the energy of photon with this frequency. Our energy of photon is just HF. They give you the frequency, and I don't remember what H is. I was gonna look this up. It's like eight point eight. No, it's uh, in. Uh, we'll do it in six point six three times ten to the minus thirty four. They didn't say what what joule seconds times three point two. Actually, let, let's do an EV. I think EV is more traditional when it's energies of this small. So I'm going to do the EV version, which is 4.14 times 10 to the minus 15. EV seconds times 3.2 times 10 to the 15 hertz. And so let's just multiply those out. 4.14 E negative 15 times 3.2 E 15. Uh, I get 13 point, we'll say 13.2 EV. I rounded that, but that, that's good. A student claims that the hydrogen atoms over a photon this frequency, the energy could convert into mass. 
adding an electron to the atom. Calculate the amount of energy you need to create a particle with a mass of an electron to determine whether there's sufficient energy gained by the atom to add another electron. So the rest energy of a mass, mc squared, you would do mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31, times uh, 3.8 times, sorry, 3.0, times 10 to the eighth meters per second squared. And let's say how many joules that is. That's 8.2 times 10 to the minus 14 joules. And then I want to convert that to EV, so I divide it by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And I get, um, Ooh, that's a lot of EV. 55.1 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 5, 5 EV. So not nearly enough energy. Not enough energy. That's way too big. Right? Uh, I just want to double check my numbers because that seems really far off. But I think that makes sense because it takes a huge amount of energy to create matter. I don't think a photon could create matter. That'd be cool. A photon could create matter, right? Like create electrons and, or like just, you know, like it takes a huge amount of energy to do that. So, all right. Left part of the chart is complete and represents the initial and initial electric potential. Oh, that's good. So I feel like I did the electric potential correctly. I got a negative number here. Uh, in the space provided on the right, draw a bar to represent the possible final electric potential energy of the atom and final kinetic energy of the electron. So uh, we've absorbed the photon, right? So we are going to, uh, it's not going to move as fast. If you look at our speed equation, right? If you look at our speed, if you increase the R, the V goes down, right? So that means we're going to absorb, we're going to absorb that photon. So we're definitely going to lose kinetic energy because it's going to go to higher orbit, right? That's what they're saying. And so we've absorbed the photon. So we're definitely going to lose the kinetic energy. Okay. But we're definitely going to gain potential energy, but it's going to go up more than like than this loss because it's not that the energy should be the same because if we absorbed a photon, we absorb some energy, right? So whatever this gap is, it should go up by that and then some more. So I would put it like this, make it very clear that this gap is bigger than this gap right here because we gained overall energy. So this total energy should be more basically, right? Um, so yeah. Um, let's see, anything else I want to do? Uh, and space provided on the right draw, if I don't, okay, they didn't ask me to explain anything. Just, just that like that. Okay, cool. I think that's it.